This is the largest project of this kind in Australia. What we're trying to do is, at scale, replace the seagrasses that have been lost in Coburn Sound. And the scale is hectares. It's hundreds of hectares. It is not a scale that many projects look at. That's what makes it different. You're sitting in one of the most diverse temperate environments for seagrasses in the world. There are 21 to 25 species, depending on whose species count it is, um, living in southwest or west Australia. And they occupy thousands of square kilometres and are an important resource for our fisheries, uh, for carbon acquisition and carbon burial, and for protecting our coastlines. And they're threatened. We lose approximately one uh, soccer field of seagrasses every half an hour globally. Wondering what Gary's talking about? Well, that's Seeds for Snapper, the largest and longest running community driven seagrass restoration program in Australia. Running since 2018, the initiative looks to turn the tides on seagrass degradation in Coburn Sound. The catalyst behind this program was simple respond to the growing chorus of fishos in Western Australia who noticed a decline in their local seagrass meadows. A problem too important to ignore, we set our sights on rewriting the restoration narrative in Australia, all in a bid to look after the local fish populations. And the best part? This narrative was rewritten entirely off the back of these legends, the volunteers. They know how important the local seagrass is for their backyard, and each year donate their time, dive gear, boats and energy into collecting, processing and distributing new seagrass along the coastline. For them, it's all about the sound. A rich, diverse and abundant fishery that is the breeding ground for pink snapper. The really important thing about Coburn Sound that most people don't understand is we don't have a lot of protected waters on the west coast of West Australia. And Coburn Sound is one of the most protected bodies of water and it allows for the, the growth of seagrass on the banks, it allows for a lot of recreation activity, a lot of uh, recreational fishing, but also just, just people going out and enjoying the environment. Um, without those environmental regulations and with the loss of seagrasses in the system, that amenity is, is, is threatened. A lot of the time you look at seagrass and you don't think too much about it. You know, you're kind of swimming over the seagrass to get to the coral or you know, to get somewhere else and you just kind of, it's a bit blasé, but when you actually look at it and you're spending as much time as you know our divers are under there, you realise you know the real beauty in it and how important it is for all these species. So, how do the volunteers make this happen? Between the months of November and February, seagrass meadows flower and produce a fruit which is released into the ocean's currents and scatters with the wind and tide. The problem? As much as 97% of these seeds end up in areas where they cannot grow, where the water is too deep there is not enough light, or more commonly, where they're washed up on shore. That's where Ozfish comes in, activating their army of volunteers who are looking to make meaningful change for the future. By collecting these fruits and processing them, we can use these otherwise lost fruits to restore seagrass in areas prime for restoration. Following years of research and commitment from our volunteers and project partners, together we developed a three-step process. Step one. After careful monitoring to check the fruit is ripe, volunteer divers enter Coburn Sounds and run their fingers through the seagrass to help release the fruit. The underwater gardeners collect the fruit with special nets as they float up to the surface. We also have fishers on boats using dip nets and walkers on the beach picking up the seeds as they float to shore. Step 2. The harvested fruits are brought to shore and are emptied into purpose-built saltwater holding tanks. After a few days, the fruit ripens and releases a seed that drops to the bottom of the tank. Step three. These precious seeds are then distributed by fishers in their boats back into perfect locations for regeneration. They're given a GPS point and the seeds are simply thrown into the water where they quickly sink to the bottom and settle in the sand. Put all these together and you have a leading community-driven seagrass restoration project. You have a group of volunteers working to create change in their local waterway. You have a program that is taking the one thing we all have, passion, and putting it into practice. 
You have a program that is not just operating in the thousands, but in the millions of seeds. The Seed for Snapper really ramped up. Last year was, you know, one of our bigger, with the big community getting involved. Um, and this year, you know, we just keep climbing the ranks, getting more people involved. Um, I think we had about 300,000 seeds collected or fruit collected last year and this year we're going for the millions. So it's just, you know, and next year, who knows what we'll be going for. So it's great. In 2021, we had 1.2 million fruits collected, 1.2 tonne of fruits processed, 375,000 seeds returned to the ocean, 1,300 volunteer hours, 316 divers and 50 events. And that is just the beginning. With more and more volunteers getting involved and understanding that seagrass is essential for a productive fishery, this project is set to scale to a size that fishers will benefit from for generations to come. The environment is being impacted. If we don't go out and help to maintain and restore our, our marine environments, they will disappear in the next 30 years. We can do something about it now. This is a positive story rather than all the doom and gloom. And I think people get involved with it because they can see they can do something for the future, for themselves, for their children and their children's children. And that's the important message.